Welcome back to our channel. Today, get ready to buckle up as we embark on an unforgettable journey through the mesmerizing landscapes of Mongolia. I couldn't be more excited to go on this adventure with you all. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, so you won't miss any of our upcoming escapades. Let's dive in. Mongolia is proud to be one of the least heavily populated countries in the world. With only 3.3 million people living there, its vast landscapes are some of the last truly unspoiled wilderness frontiers on Earth. Surprisingly, there are more horses in Mongolia than people. About 4 million horses roam the land, which is more than the number of people. These horses are an important part of the culture and business of the country because they are used for transportation, herding, and even racing. Mongolia has a past that goes back thousands of years and is full of interesting stories. Nomadic groups that have lived on the tough Mongolian steppes for thousands of years have learned how to stay alive in this land. Genghis Khan's rise to power in Mongolia in the 1300s changed the country's past in a big way. Under his rule, this famous leader was able to bring together many different Mongolian tribes. His skills as a leader were unmatched and his innovative military strategies helped the Mongol Empire take over a lot of land, from China and Russia to parts of the Middle East. This was not only the start of one of the biggest empires the world has ever seen, but also an amazing story that turned Mongolia into a place where many different cultures and trade routes met. After Genghis Khan died, the huge Mongol Empire broke up into several smaller canets that ruled Mongolia for the next thousand years. By the 1600s, Mongolia was ruled by China's Qing Dynasty. This lasted until the start of the 20th century, when Mongolia got its freedom from China in 1921. A new part of its history was written. By the year 1924, Mongolia had become a communist state. This period of communism ran until 1990, when Mongolia switched to a democratic way of running the country. Mongolia has many different native groups besides the Mongols, such as the Kazakhs, Tuvans, and Bariats. These groups bring with them their own cultures, languages, and customs, and each one adds a new thread to the complex tapestry that is the Mongolian identity. Ulaanbaatar, the capital city, is in the middle of this country. It is famous for being the coldest capital in the world. This city stands in sharp contrast to Mongolia's vast rural landscapes. Skyscrapers that reach for the sky stand next to tea houses that have been around for hundreds of years. Mongolia's journey can be seen in this busy city, which connects the country's cherished past with its bold future. A beautiful stainless steel statue of Genghis Khan on his horse looks out over the city. It is more than just a monument. It shows how much Mongolia cares about its long past and hopes for the future. The oldest Buddhist monastery in Mongolia is the Irdane Zhu Monastery, which is close to the old city of Karakoram, with its huge stupas and temples set against the vast steppes. It shows a small part of the rich religious past of Mongolia. The famous gear, which is called a yurt in the west, shows how smart Mongolians are. This movable home is made for the nomadic way of life and can handle Mongolia's harsh weather, from hot summers to freezing winters. Its round form helps heat move around well, and it's easy to put together so families can move to find better pastures. The five snouts, which are sheep, goats, cattle, camels, and horses, are the main ways that Mongolian nomads divide their animals. Since ancient times, these animals have been an important part of Mongolian life. They provide food, transportation, and building materials. The Nyadam Festival is an important part of Mongolia's culture. This event is often called the Three Manly Games because it features horse races, archery, and wrestling. Nyadam is more than just a show of strength. It is also a live picture of Mongolia's culture, a vibrant panorama of song, dance, and colorful clothing set against the backdrop of large steps. The Camel Festival in the Gobi Desert honors the country's long history with camels. The event shows how much Mongolia values these hardy desert animals. There are exciting camel races, 
unique camel polo games, and even a camel beauty contest. When you go to the Altai area, you can find the amazing art of eagle hunting. The Kazakh minority works with golden eagles to catch small animals. This form of hunting has been around since the beginning of time. This long-held custom comes to a head at the Golden Eagle Festival, which celebrates the strong bond between bird and trainer. Kumi, Mongolia's airy throat singing, shows how close the country is to nature. This fascinating form of art lets the singer make more than one tone at the same time, making melodies that sound like the vastness of nature. The horsehead fiddle or mooring cure is an important part of this music. It was made with two strings made completely of horsehair. Its sound reminds people of the wide Mongolian steppes, telling stories of the land and capturing the essence of Mongolian culture. The Tsam dance is a visual show that goes well with these musical wonders. This mask ritual blends Buddhist stories and lessons together as the performers put on masks of gods and demons. They tell stories that show how good always wins over evil. This leads the audience on a journey of spiritual thought. Mongolia celebrates its unique Sagayan Sar White Moon Festival as the Lunar New Year begins. But the holiday isn't just about feasts. Families honor their elders with scheduled visits and the Reverend Zolgok greeting, in which the young hold the elders' elbows in a heartfelt sign of respect. This custom shows how much the country values its lineage. Mongolia is a patchwork of wonders. It has a lot of natural resources, beautiful scenery, and a rich culture. Mongolia has a rich past and culture, and it also has a lot of valuable minerals hidden beneath its crust. Copper, gold, and coal are found in huge amounts. The Oyutogoi mine, whose name means turquoise hill, is one of the biggest copper and gold mines in the world. This shows how much untapped potential Mongolia has. The flaming rocks that are in the middle of the Gobi Desert show what Mongolia was like in the past. Dinosaur and other ancient fossils have been found in these cliffs, which has helped us learn a lot about Earth's early history. The Gobi is known for being very hot, but it also has a cool secret. Eagle Valley, also called Yolin Am, is a cool oasis in the middle of the desert. It has thick layers of ice even during the hot summers, which is a sharp contrast to its sandy exterior. Birkin Khaldun in the Kenti Mountains is a spiritual light, which adds to its mystery. Mongolians have been going to this holy mountain for a long time because it is thought to be where Genghis Khan was born. Even though it has recently been visited by foreign travelers, it is still a holy place. Mongolia's huge steppes have more to offer than just old ruins and desert views. Mongolia has more than 3,000 lakes, but Lake Kovskol, which is called the Blue Pearl of Mongolia, stands out. As one of the oldest and deepest lakes in the world, it is shrouded in tales that say gods live in its blue depths. During the winter, Lake Kovskol changes in a beautiful way. It turns into a shiny ice mirror that can hold the weight of cars. This change from snow to ice ends with the exciting games, races, and celebrations of the ice festival. The banks of the Orkin River, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, are full of stories from the past. The great powers that once ruled the Mongolian steppes can be seen in the ruins of places like the Yukir capital of Ordu Balik. There are mysterious deer stones all over the Mongolian scenery. The carvings of flying deer on these megaliths from the Bronze Age have led to a lot of discussion. Historians and researchers don't know for sure what they were used for, but many people think they have shamanistic meanings. Mongolia is a place where nature and culture blend together in a way that makes tales seem real. Mongolian folklore is based on the idea that the wolf is a symbol of power, freedom, and the wild spirit of the steppes. The wolf is a big part of Mongolian stories and legends, which shows how important it is to the culture. Many Mongolians think of the wolf as their totem or spirit animal. In the rugged beauty of Mongolia's Altai Mountains, one of the planet's last safe havens, the elusive snow leopard quietly explores its high-altitude domains. Proof that nature is an expert designer, its speckled fur blends in perfectly with the icy surroundings. 
Mongolians have always had a deep respect for the animals that live on their land. And this cat is a good example of that. If you go further, you will find that the Mazalele, also called the Gobi Bear, lives in the Gobi Desert. Mongolians see this type of brown bear, which is on the verge of extinction, as the desert's guardian who knows all of its secrets. Mongolia's huge plains are also home to Przewalski's horse, which is the only species of wild horse left in the world. Mongolia's attempts to protect and reintroduce these beautiful animals show how strongly the country cares about conservation. Mongolia is a fascinating place to visit because of its beautiful landscapes, rich past, and lively culture. Beyond its surface is a country whose people are strong, whose history goes back thousands of years, and whose spirit echoes through the vast Mongolian steppes. I hope you enjoyed this adventure as much as I did. If there are any places you would like us to explore next, leave them in the comment section. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our next adventure. Until then, keep exploring and stay curious.